welcome to my conversation about calculating pH for strong acids and base solutions. Now, I'm going to give you a disclaimer here right now. The way I'm showing you with this, what I call a BSA table, is long, but it gives you very complete information about what is in the solution. And from that perspective, it um, helps you go beyond answering a narrow question. Um, the other thing it will do is it will help prepare you for when you get into acid-based titrations and acid-based neutralizations because a strong acid plus a strong base is a stoichiometry till the limiting runs out. Right now, we're going to be doing strong acid or a strong base. So in this problem, I have HClO3 plus water. I'm going to go ahead and include it, but we don't care about water in the calculation because it's the solvent. It's a pure liquid. So I'll get H3O plus plus ClO3 minus. Okay, now the question tells us I have a 0 0.050 molar solution. Now here's the deal. Uh, you may have used moles in a BSA table. Um, you can find that in gas laws, if you've covered that already, you can use pressure as long as you have the same volume temperature, or you can have volume as long as you have the same pressure temperature conditions. Now we're going to find that you can use molarity as long as all dilutions have been accounted for. And since we aren't adding volume to volume to this, there's no dilutions, so we can use this table. At the beginning, we have no other source of our hydronium or our um, chlorate ion. We lose reactant and we gain product as a reaction proceeds. So there is no limiting, so it's going to just depend upon our starting amount, 0 0.050, 0 0.050. You want to always, always, always make sure you are including the mole ratio, even if it is one to one. I don't know what your instructor does, but if you if my kids get an answer incorrect, I start hunting for ways to give them partial credit for demonstrating a certain level of knowledge. And to me, a mole ratio, even if it's one to one, demonstrates um, a level of understanding that's deserving of a point. Okay, so I run out of the acid, which makes sense because this is a strong acid and we're going to assume strong acids proceed 100% to make product. My H3O is, and my hydronium ion is 0 0.050, as is my chlorate ion. So now if the question asks you what is present in solution or draw what is present in solution, we know exactly what species are present in our solution. So I think that's another advantage of the BSA table. Now pH, we have our hydronium ion, so pH is simply minus the log of that number, 0 0.050, and I get a pH, hopefully I've done all my math right, of 1.30. Okay, now that's how I like to show it. Again, it's extra work, but as you're problem solving, I think it's helpful to have a framework to plug numbers into. Now, minimally, what I would require is for a student to write 0 0.050 moles of HClO3 per one liter, because all work leading up to the final answer must be shown. I want to eliminate moles of HClO3 and I want moles of H plus and if you look at the formula, oops there's an L there, if you look at the formula there's one H plus for every one mole of HClO3. Okay, So hopefully that helps you out with that one. Let's try a strontium hydroxide. So I don't like to add water with my strong bases. I Honestly, I just don't know what to do with it. So I never add water. 
and all um, solutions are aqueous with acids and bases. So I get a little sloppy with my states, but if it's an acid-based chemistry, everything's aqueous. All right, so this time I have 0 0.033 molar strontium hydroxide. At the beginning, I have none of either of these. I'm going to lose because it's strong, and we assume that we lose all of our strong. But if you're going from one substance, from one substance to another substance, you must multiply by the mole ratio. And it's where we're going to is on top, so one on top, from is on the bottom. It happens to be one. But let's look at the hydroxide. It's where we're going to on top over where we're coming from on the bottom. So I've run out of my strong. Now if you were asked questions about what is present in solution, you have all of those values laid out for you. So I have my hydroxide good way into the problem. Now I need my pH. So you can go a couple of directions. You can go to pOH and then to pH, or you can go to your H3O plus molarity and then to pOH. Okay. So I did this direction here. So my pOH is equal to minus the log of 0 0.066. You might want to try the other direction. Make sure you get the same numbers as I do. So my pOH is 1.18. So pH is equal to 14 minus my pOH. So I get a pH of 12.82. Now make sure that your numbers are logical. I have a strong base. My pH should be much greater than 7 because I have a you know, relatively concentrated solution of a strong base. So make sure you follow your logic there. Um, don't take minus the log. This is really common. You see this number, they take minus the log of that number and you call it the pH, but it's not the pH. It's the pOH, and plus 1.18 is not a logical number for a strong base. So, you know, think logically when you get answers. Don't just plug and chug into calculators. Okay, let's take a look at this next one. This time we're going to go backwards. So I have HBr plus H2O, which I'm not worried about yields H3O plus plus the conjugate Br minus. Okay, so this time I'm given a pH. So my pH is equal to 3.2. Now if you are given pH values, it's giving you this final. We measure the pH of a solution after that instant that everything has to become dissociated. So pH is giving us this final value here. Okay, so let's crank through that. My H3O plus would equal 10 to the minus pH. So my H3O plus is 6.31 times 10 to the minus fourth, so molar. That gives me this final value. Okay, now since these, so now this is a zero, right? And this is a zero, sometimes it's helpful to plug those in. This means I must have added 6.31 times 10 to the minus fourth. So if I wanted to find my bromide, that means I must have added that same amount times my mole ratio of 1 to 1. So 
Most of you can see that. You need supporting work. This is about giving you a framework to understand. So here I must have lost 6.31 times 10 to the minus fourth times my mole ratio. Everything's originating now from this H3O plus. It is one to one. Um, you might want to capture some partial credit there. So my original molarity of my acid must have been 6.31 times 10 to the minus fourth molar. Okay, I mean that's a long way to do this question, but it gives you so much information in the process. Um, so that's why I encourage you to use this, but minimally, minimally you would want to show that mole ratio. One mole of HBr was needed to release every one mole of H3O plus. Okay, so let's try one more very practical one. This time again I have barium hydroxide, another strong base. So I have barium hydroxide. We'll dissociate a hundred percent to give me barium ion and two hydroxides. What's really nice about an acid base unit is primarily you have one to one mole ratios. Your exceptions will be that those three little strong bases in group two. Okay. So I have 4.4 grams I need to deal with molarities. So I'm going to go ahead and calculate my molarity. Molarity is equal to moles per liter. Moles are equal to mass over molar mass. So I'm going to use this formula. So I have 4.5 grams over the molar mass is 171. 0.34 times the liters. This is milliliters. You've got to get milliliters to liters. You probably want to show that work so you don't take your decimal place the wrong direction. And I get a molarity of um, 5.25 times 10 to the minus 2. Okay, so that's here, 5.25 times 10 to the minus 2, 0, 0. I know it's going to go 100%. I know I'm going to lose every bit of this. Oops. It's hard to write and think and keep your mouth all in sync at the same time. Multiply by your mole ratio, plus 5.25 times 10 to your minus 2 times that mole ratio. Okay, and I didn't get this number, so let me do this real quick. 5.25 times 10 to the minus 2 times 2 gives me 1.05 times 10 to the minus 1. And this is 5.25 times 10 to the minus 2. And these are all molarities. We've accounted for any volume changes. Okay, so now from this, you're going to have to go from POH, or from OH. I would personally go to POH. I feel like it's fewer keystrokes for some reason. And from that, you would have to get to pH. And so I get an answer of 13.02. Strongly recommend you check that value since I was doing it on the fly there. Okay, does it make sense? Yes, we've got a fairly strong, uh, a fairly, fairly high concentration, reasonably high. We have a strong base we accept the pH to be greater than 7, and we got greater than 7, just as we expected. So, okay, I hope that helps. So, good luck with chemistry and all your little uh, BSA table calculations. Have a good day.